Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician the Civil War as we continue our quest to rid the state of Kentucky of the Yankee invaders. We'll see if we can actually drive them out and get Kentucky to flip to the Confederacy. In the meantime, we've got to get that credit rating up so we can get back to recruiting new units because the Union is going to start passing us in Menfielded very quickly. Now, we can accept a certain extent of that because the Union did have significantly more men than the Confederacy, so that's not a huge deal. But it could get pretty ugly if we don't at least stay somewhat close. All right, we're going to have... A pretty significant battle in Virginia. Looks like we're going to outnumber him slightly. Actually, more than slightly. Because <laughs> we've got 27,000 cavalry as well. So this could be a real opportunity to um, put the finishing touches on things here in Virginia. This is going to be a major battle between the units that have retaken Washington and ourselves. So this is a battle not only for Virginia, but this is a battle for Washington, D.C. All right, we will be starting with just Johnston's first corps of the Army of Northern Virginia. That's going to be the Muddy Special Forces Division, Zollicoffer's Division, uh, and Stewart's Cavalry, along with Pillow's Division. The others will be arriving later on. So let's take a look and see kind of where we're at on that. Condition Report, Confederacy... Overview, I think is where it is. There we go. No, can't remember exactly where we find that. There we go. I must have clicked on Union by uh, accident. Army Northern Virginia, 2nd Corps arriving in 15 hours, 3rd Corps arriving in 17 hours. So we want to kind of sit back until we get all of our troops, but uh, we are on the defensive, which means we've got a lot of ground to hold. We've got objectives to hold. He's going to be coming in, it appears, from over here. So if we can hold the line here, we may get reinforcements from this side and be able to hit his flank. So we'll start building up a defensive position with the first core up in this area somewhere. He's probably going to be coming down this road right here. Let's get a look. I don't think I've fought on this map before. Pretty open battleground. We're going to have to spread out into single line because we're going to probably be outnumbered to start. Let's get Pickett right in here. Actually, we might be better off to hold back here against along this this road I'm thinking I don't know I gotta think about this a little bit okay here they come they're coming right down the road and we, we actually kind of left a bit of a gap right there um, but I've got artillery covering that 14 pounder James's but they've got kind of a weird field of fire at the moment that's going to make it a little difficult, but they will still be able to hit these guys at some point. I may need to move these 14-pounders up to the center here so that they can get a clearer field of fire down that road. These guys, same deal, don't really have much of a field of fire. I'm wondering if I can... Maybe if I pull these skirmishers back, that'll give them a better, better look. Let's take a look and see if that helps at all. I think it's these trees that are in the way. I like that you can see that now, which is a nice update that they've made. But let's wait and see. He's probably going to wait to get his whole force online before he does anything. Yeah, so pulling back those skirmishers did help. We now have a much greater field of fire for these 12-pounder howitzers out on the flank, the Rock Ridge Artillery. Let's see if we can get a a view down this line we may need to pull these skirmishers back too this is the uh the third sfga yeah we're still not getting a view down that line i'm gonna pull these skirmishers back see if that opens it up i think it might just be the terrain all right, we made it to the end of the day. Uh, so let's take a look and see where we're at now on the arrival of our reinforcements. Four hours for the second corps, five hours for the third corps. So they'll be arriving at uh, 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. Plenty of time to have a solid impact on this battle. There's no way he's going to get down here and push into my first corps and time to drive me off. All right, first shots have been fired between skirmishers. 
from John C. Pemberton's detachment, uh, which is the 3rd SFGA uh, and element, the lead elements of the Union forces who are now starting to appear. And we can see their guns coming in. We're going to have a hard time with the artillery just because of the lack of ability to get a clear line of sight where we are. Uh, it looks like these guys will be able to fire, but that's about it. I may need to pull my pull my artillery out here somewhere to where they can actually get get some sight. Let's see if we can do that on either side. That might make a difference. All right, our guns have opened up over here on the right side. Now I'm going to put the cavalry on either side to protect them. Same thing I think is going to be true when we get these guns up over here. So this is actually really nice because he's advancing a division at our right flank. And now we're going to have these 14-pounder James, the SF Iron Rain battery, firing right into their flank as they come down the line. Go ahead and pull these skirmishers back. Pull them in, guys. Pull them in. There we go. They're pretty even so far. Gibson's going to actually shift over toward these guys. I'm going to pull those skirmishers in. So we can get Rex's raiders to be able to open up on these guys as they're coming in. He's got a lot more men coming down the line, but they're taking a while to get there. I'm going to switch the 14 pounder James's to counter battery fire so we can start lighting up this battery here. And if he brings that battery in up here on this flank, we're going to drive the cavalry into them. Oh, Rex's Raiders are going to take a melee attack right here. Hopefully they hold up well. They're about to get their perk. There it is. Let's give them iron discipline. Nice job, boys. Way to hold off. Drive them back. Rockbridge artillery can't fire because they're too close to the line. Let's move them over. Gonna wait and see what this artillery here does. Once they start to get settled, we might drive Hill up there. We're about an hour away from our reinfor first reinforcements arriving, but we may not need them. How many men's he got on the field right now? Strength report. All right, he's got about two to one advantage in manpower right now, but he's just not coordinating his attack very well. Alright, we got a perk for the 5th SFGA. Uh, let's go sharpshooters. sure why these guys aren't firing. Oh, they can't see past the woods. Darn it. Okay. What if we back them up a little bit? Can they fire over the woods then? Okay. Let's send the cav up to go deal with these guns. He's got them out there by themselves. No infantry support. Hopefully they hit them before they get fired on. AP Hills Cavalry. 
disrupting the enemy guns. Nicely done, boys. Boy, there's a lot of men back here. He hasn't even put it into line yet. And now we've got a single brigade here taking on an entire division. Not a good look for you, dude. bring up the Hung Hungarian Impaler so they can get some fire on this brigade here. Rear Valley Brigade. Rex's Raiders holding well. There's a very poorly coordinated attack by the Union. And that happens sometimes. Perfect example was Cold Harbor. Cold Harbor, the assault on July 3rd. A lot of people remember that as how bloody it was, but really it was just a very poorly coordinated and executed attack. Units went in unsupported. Uh, Corps commanders sent in very few of their units. It was kind of like this attack in a lot of ways. Except, in that case, the Union was attacking a heavily fortified position. Alright. Should be seeing some reinforcements here soon. Jackson arrives! Another core on the field. They're going to start coming in from this side. Let's give them time to, to get into position. We still have no line of sight here with these guys. Going to keep trying to move them around until we find a spot where they can fire. But again, may not need them. So Zollicoffer's division has lost 542 men over here. And it looks like the Union's disengaging, at least for the time being. Alright, 2nd Corps. Where do we want to send them? Because there's just really no good area. I guess right up in here, huh? Because then we'll have the first corps arriving in about uh, 20 minutes. Or the third corps, I should say. Alright, here comes another assault. Throw this one back, and that should probably do it long before the others arrive. Here come the third corps. Where are they coming in from? Same spot? Yeah, it looks like it might be. It'll be a lot of men loading up over there. I don't think we're going to need them, though. Two more batteries over in this spot. Send in the cavalry. Drove back best. I think if we take out these two batteries, that'll pretty well do it. Hit him. We got this other battery right there, which makes me a little nervous. So let's go get that one, too. Man, we have just done a number on his artillery because he put all those batteries out on the on the flank with no support. And now we've got him bunched up over here. The, you know, I don't think, I, I'm, I'm a little tempted to charge in. 
but let's not mess up a good thing. We've got him bunched up. We can put some really good fire on him. Who was wounded? The commander of the First Corps has been wounded. Joe Johnston was wounded. Wow. What is my First Corps commander doing out there? Where is he? right here that's why he was right there at the center of the fight that probably wasn't a wise move on my part Corps commanders did get wounded and killed in this war I mean Stonewall Jackson's a perfect example Longstreet was severely wounded you had John Sedgwick killed John John Reynolds killed Leonidas Polk Alright, that was just a disaster on his part. Very poorly coordinated attack. 10,000 Union casualties. We ended up causing a couple units to disintegrate there at the end, so it's 13,000 Union casualties total to just 3,000 for myself. So, another great victory. This time we're going to secure Washington, D.C. and drive off the Union armies. Alright, and our... Credit rating's back up to B, at least for now, so we're being a little more fiscally responsible. This should, yep, mean retaking of Washington. Let's go ahead and get the second corps up there. We'll keep the Army of Virginia where it is. Army of Northern Virginia headquarters over here. Lee's got a perk now. Uh, we're going to go with Ambulance Corps. I like being able to get those wounded and disabled men back into the fold as quickly as possible. I want to take a look at the situation in Kentucky real quick and see how we're doing. We still have the Department of uh, the Ohio hanging on for dear life there. Looks like Johnston is in a place where he can move finally. We've got to get him some supplies to deal with our food issue. We kind of have the same problem with the Army of Georgia. We just don't have enough supply depots in Kentucky right now to feed our armies. Alright, there's still a Union First Corps in Kentucky. And I think it's important to note that Union National Morale teeters on the breaking point. He's at 28. I believe if it drops below 25, that's it. Yep. So it's quite possible that winning in Kentucky could spell the end for him. That first corps is just bouncing around, trying to get somewhere that he can go. We, we might have to send Sweet's army up there to go deal with them. Uh, Department of the Ohio and the Army of the Mississippi are going to engage. Where is this? Southern Illinois. Okay. Interesting, and he's actually got some other units in that area. But I think we've got this. Okay, Nathan Bedford Forrest and the Army of Mississippi are going to be defending a Union against a Union army that's going to be coming down this way. Uh, they will most likely come down here through Burton, I would think. So we're going to dig in right along here, which is actually a really good position. Okay, well, he's going to pull off a little bit of a surprise here. He's coming down this road from Burton rather than across this way. So we were kind of prepared for that. I put a unit of cavalry out there just in case such a thing would occur. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring up a, a division over here now. Pull the three-inch ordnance back here. We'll get Fry's Brigade right up in here next to the cavalry. Manny's Brigade in beside them, beside that fence. And then we'll just start shifting our way over. Um, yeah, let's get Crawford's division over there. Right up alongside them, and I think that ought to be good for now. I'm going to send Green's Brigade up to the bridge over Burton here. 
And I think I'll do the same with Frost's division. Okay, so this is going to get kind of interesting because we've got him right down in this area here. All right, he got stocked in a cross. That's not really good for us. That puts this cavalry in an interesting situation. The good news is we've got help on the way. I'm going to send Donaldson right up here to get at Stockton because we've got a flank concern here. I'm going to move Fagan up. I want to protect this crossing if I can. there. Got more artillery on the way. I'm going to actually deploy them right there. That's the artillery that goes with this division here. For some reason they came across this bridge while the others are coming across the other way. So now, what at the time appeared like it might have been a good idea for the Union Brigade, now he may ha have himself stuck over here. As we've got another brigade getting ready to deploy up here at the bridge. That's Gladden's brigade. Really like to get these guys across, but it looks like they're engaged right now, so they won't. Stockton, that might not have worked out too well for you. I'm a little worried about Green's cavalry, though. I think I'm going to need to push these guys. There we go. We're finally going to get slack across. And then he can fire on the 1st Brigade's flank. artillery up here too. Drive him into the water. He threw out some skirmishers to try and hold me off. Uh, what are we doing here guys? Let's get across. got some artillery up here that might be an issue all right now we're gonna have to move forward I think especially with these units Oh, there goes my cavalry. He just broke. And he broke in a bad spot. Alright, we'll send Donaldson up here. He's going to have to take his reboard muskets and his tired self and hold this bridge. Now here comes a Union Brigade coming across the bridge against Gladden. Number him two to one. 
Oh boy, here he comes. This might not be working out so well. charge into him. You know what? I know we're exhausted and nervous. And we're probably going to break. Yep. Now right here we've got a big numbers advantage, but we're still shooting it out pretty even, so I feel like we're going to have to just do what we got to do here. We did break Churchill. Mount up and ride into him. I'm getting aggressive. Now that we're near the end of the war. Send out skirmishers here. Alright, we broke Franklin, so that worked out okay. I'm going to send Slack north. I'm going to send Clark up this way too. Donaldson's actually holding. Even though he's fragmented and exhausted. So I'm going to send Gladden up here to help out now. Oh, they are firing. I should have just held where they are. Why is my army commander so far so close to the battlefield. I know because it's Nathan Bedford Forrest and that's what he does. But, I mean, my man had a ton of short, uh, horses shot out from under him during the war. Probably killed more men than any other Confederate Lieutenant General. I think that's probably a given. Historically. Get over there. So now that we broke a couple of those units, this allows me to start doubling up in some spots when it's much needed because Donaldson's not going to hold here. So we got to get up and give him some help on that third brigade. We'll dismount this cavalry. Start moving forward. Casualties are slightly higher for us. Percentage-wise, it's about the same. Oh, he's sending another brigade across. Just in the nick of time, too. Yeah, I'd rather have the infantry come, come out in front here. two brigades. Alright, if we can deal with these guys, I think we'll win this battle. This won't matter as much up here. Alright, there you go. We drove off Stockton. Sending a whole division across now. Alright. We need to do something decisive here to win this battle before we get loaded up on up there. So let's try to break this flank.
Good. It worked. All right. I figured if we broke those guys, it wouldn't matter what was happening up here. It would be too late for them. Beautiful. Pretty even casualty-wise. Actually, at the very end, we increased the enemy casualties. But otherwise, it was a pretty even fight. And that wasn't... Tactically, that wasn't the best day for me. I got surprised on the right. Had to adjust, but we made it work. All right, pretty even on both sides. I don't know if a minor victory is going to be enough to drive enemy morale below that magic number. I still think taking Kentucky is what's going to be needed for that. Let's see what the impact was. It did drop by 0.96% for a minor victory. We haven't really had any major victories. That's just based on how major victories work in the game. But... That was a victory in Illinois, which is kind of a big deal. That was on northern soil. I have not decided what we're going to do next. I know we have a lot of patrons that have signed up for units, and so that's why I keep these going. But uh, we've done quite a few campaigns on this game. And as much as I absolutely love playing it, I'm not sure where we go next. We might try a different start time. That might be the way to go. Try a different start time and see if that kind of makes it a little more interesting. If you have other suggestions on how you'd like me to see, uh, how you'd like to see the next campaign go, let me know. But we're going to wrap it up right there for now. Forest, that's a problem. I don't think we're going to be... I, we had those other armies that were headed that way, and we knew that was going to be a problem. I think we're going to have to withdraw... Uh, from southern Illinois in light of that. I was really hoping we'd be able to finish off Kentucky in this episode. Let's wait and see what happens. We've got Sweet's Army right there. Disaster at Fort Washington. Uh, we're, we're just kind of fighting back and forth over these forts. Alright, so let's wrap it up right there. Matt, National morale for the enemy is still at 28. He's finally back ahead of me in men fielded. But uh, let me know your thoughts, not only about this episode, but also about where you'd like us to see. You'd like us to see, uh, go next with this um, Union or Confederate start year. Do something completely different. Let me know. We'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.